Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. I see everybody's here and coming in. I'm going to give it a few minutes so that uh, everyone who wants to watch live can come in and join us. How is everybody doing? Today is the 22nd of October. Oh, my glory. The 22nd. We're quickly approaching November, y'all. So uh, we're going to revisit the turkey mug rug that I put out like two years ago, I think it was. And that's what we're making today. So the free pattern is down in the description box. If you want to get this pattern, jump down there. You can print it off. Um, yes. Isn't he so cute? Hello, everybody. So great to see you. So in the spirit of giving, I'm going to ask you to do me a huge favor, uh, not while you're watching, don't leave while you're watching, but when this video is over, there's a share button right underneath of the video. If you're on Facebook, share this video with your quilting friends right on your Facebook so they can get a copy of this cute little turkey mug rug too. Y'all can all do your own little turkey mug rugs and maybe do an exchange or do them for Thanksgiving. Blink an eye and it will be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. You've already shared. Wow, thank you. Oh, it's so great to see y'all. I want to thank my moderators, Miss Mimsy. Sherry, I saw your message. You are super busy, but you're, you're listening in and I appreciate you. Thank you, Miss Mimsy. Whew, I feel better knowing that there are people watching the chat. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. Lots of fun. Thank you, Miss Vicki. Thank you. So how are y'all doing? Who is super busy getting ready for, let's see, I'm talking about Thanksgiving, but before you know it, Christmas is gonna be here. What are you working, preparing projects for Christmas? Are you super busy? Are you super busy? So, uh, yes, this video is live. And uh, if you're watching on the replay, I'm so glad you're here. I totally get it if you want to skip over to where we actually get started. And that's okay. If you're here live, I would love it if you participate in the chat. That's one of the main reasons why we're doing live videos is so that you can uh, hang out with everybody and uh, spend time with one another. Wine bags. Ooh, I don't know that I've ever seen those. I'll have to search wine bags up on YouTube and see how you make those. Donna's doing a photo quilt. Aw, I'm so glad, Donna. Del Maria is working on 12th row quilt. <laughs> 12th row quilts for Christmas. I thought I was busy. <laughs> That's a lot. Sherry said the bear factory is open. She must be making bear after bear. How can I send you a picture? Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can send me a picture at Lisa Cape and Quilts. There's a link down below. And if you don't do Facebook, open up the description box and click over to my Etsy store. There's a really cool function through Etsy is that you can send me messages that include pictures. So if you don't do Facebook, Jump over to Etsy, my Etsy shop, and send me your photo that way. Vicki has snow. Oh my goodness. Y'all, I'm going to switch this screen over to the cutting mat. Here's the little mug rug we're going to make today. Here's the pattern. It's a one-page PDF. All your tracing templates. And it also tells you uh, your materials that you can prepare to make the mug rug. Judy, you just got done with the cat. Oh, I love the cat one. <laughs> I'm a cat person. I love the cat. Well, I don't know if I'm a cat. I would say I'm equally a cat and a dog person. Right now, we don't have either, but we have a bird. So I would say I'm more of a bird person. <laughs> I'm more of a bird person. But the cat mug rug is super cute. Hazel, you're on vacation. Wow. From the north of UK. I hope you enjoy your vacation. I hope you just relax 
and take it all in and slow down while you're on vacation. Ruth is cutting her pieces now. All right, Miss Ruth. The good thing is that most of these pieces are fairly large, right? <laughs> They're fairly large. The little eyes uh, are the smallest parts to cut out for this mug rug. And y'all, I'm just going to cheat when it comes to the pupils. You know, there's a little tiny circle that you can cut out of fabric, but I'm gonna use a permanent fabric marker to do the little eyes. It's quick and easy. So to save time in today's video, y'all, I've already prepared all of my stuff. I've already cut out my applique. I've already cut out the top of my mug rug, the batting and the backing fabric. Here are all of my applique pieces for this mug rug. Make sure I haven't lost anything. Yep, there we go. Uh, they still have the paper on the back. And in today's video, I'm using heat and bond light. Uh, you can stitch through heat and bond light. If you've never uh, used heat and bond products, I just published a video yesterday talking about the differences between heat and bond light and heat and bond ultra hold in the red package. Okay, and so I highly encourage you to watch that video because not only do we discuss the differences between those two products, but I show you step by step on how to get to this part and then sewing it down onto your project. So I've noticed in the last couple lives, I like to go ahead and pre-cut all this because this part can be time consuming, right? And most of you don't wanna sit here while I'm tracing and cutting out all of these pieces. So I usually prepare that ahead of time. But I've had some new quilters, some new quilters that are new to applique, ask me during the lives, if I could show this process. So there is a 10 minute video you can go and watch when we're done that shows you how to use the heat and bond. I thought I would do that so that I could reference that video if anyone ever has questions. Yep, so I'm just gonna use this little picture. Y'all, when you print this out, I used my black and white printer. <laughs> but if you have a color printer, this actually prints out in color. I just did not use my color printer to print that out. But I'm gonna use him as a little reference to place all my pieces. And we'll use, we'll just move that other mug rug right out of the way. Let's see, I'm gonna bring over the top of my mug rug and I'm gonna scoot those things out of the way. And I'm gonna warm up my iron. Ruth, you used a hole punch. That is so smart. That is so smart. Why did I never ever think of that? How did it do cutting out the fabric with your hole punch? Actually, I want to move this over so you can see much better. Let me scoot some stuff. Do you have just ever have days where just you just seem a little off? <laughs> Today just seems a little off for me. But I better get with it because after the live, I have two t-shirt quilts to quilt. So I better get with it. <laughs> Ooh, Judy uh, bought a bunch of the wiggly eyes to use. I bet you that is so cute. I'm just going to separate my pieces so that I have them all here. My eyes eyes and that all right y'all we're gonna start laying out this mug rug now what's really fun is that you can play around with the placement of the mug rug okay so this is the first one I did I actually think he looks like he has like a crown on his head <laughs> and I didn't notice that when I was making this mug rug but it actually varies, the placement varies from what I show here on the pattern. So I'm gonna try to do it more like this one. So it doesn't look so much like he's got a crown on top of his head. Do you see that? He's still really cute. We'll call him King Turkey. <laughs> this one I'm gonna play around with the placement a little bit different. 
It's so great to see y'all. All right. So as I mentioned before, I still have the paper on. So as I pull the pieces over, I'm going to be removing the paper off the back. And that should reveal the shiny side, the adhesive of the heat and bond light. And we're just going to start laying out this mug rug. I'm going to put him closer to the bottom like that. We're going to have a binding that comes up over if you decide to do the binding. That comes up over. So I want to make sure that there's some space there. And then let's start laying in these leaves. Uh, I keep calling them leaves. They look like leaves, don't they? They're feathers. <laughs> feathers, Lisa. Judy, you've been watching all the videos and downloading all the pat. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you have lots of fun. One of the reasons, and I don't think I even mentioned this in the video I put out yesterday about the heat and bond light, but one of the things I really love about it is that you can create layers with the heat and bond light and it's still light enough that it uh, doesn't add a lot of thickness where your applique is. And I'm just going to start laying these pieces in. I might end up moving some of them around. Like that. Oh, Ella, I saw your post about your back surgery. You said, I'm still recovering and now I'm having some complications. Well, I hope you don't end up back in the hospital, but I really hope that you keep us updated, please. So we've all been... Uh, following your progress. Whoops, there we go. Something like that. Like that. And then these smaller feathers, we're gonna put sort of right in the middle, like that. And like that. I might have to scoot all that stuff up. <laughs> like that. And like that. Yep, we're going to scoot all this up just like this and that. And that. And like that. And then I'm going to take this off. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and fuse these for just a second so they don't move around as I place all the pieces on top. I think that's a really good idea. That way they don't shift around while I'm working. All right, let's just heat set these for just a second and it doesn't have to be for the full time, just long enough to get them to stick so they don't move around. There we go. Ah, oh, Pat, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'll tell you what, it's really nice to have something to look forward to, isn't it? Having the live videos when everybody can hang out with one another, I think that's been really, really good for me. <laughs> I've really come to look forward to Thursdays. 
All right, so we can place the big circle down. His head goes on top just like this. So we're still creating layers. Like that. I think that looks pretty good. Let's fuse that down so it doesn't move. And then we have the two eyes. There's one. There's the other. And then we have his beak. And the pointy part goes down like that. And then who knows what this part is called on a turkey? <laughs> I don't know what that's called. This can go right there underneath of his beak. These little parts I like to just scoot around with something pokey. Like this. Down, down, down. There we go. There. I think that looks good. Let's Heat set that so it doesn't move. Oh, it's called a waddle. Yay, thank you. I did not know that. <laughs> now that all my pieces are in place, I'm going to go ahead and heat set this. Uh, heat and bond light is for six seconds. No steam. Good hot iron. I have mine set on a cotton setting. And I'm just heat setting and really bonding that adhesive into the fabric. Jean said, I lost the little gobbler three times before I got it fused on. I know it's so tiny, isn't it? It's tiny. All right, there we go. All of our pieces are down. I'm gonna find a permanent fabric marker. Permanent fabric marker. This will do. Uh, let's see. This one is Marvy. M A R V Y. Uh, I got these on Amazon. They came a whole bunch of different sizes. Uh, actually, that's an Arteza, which is not my favorite. <laughs> I like the Marvy ones, but this one came in a multi pack of a whole bunch of different sizes. And I found that these don't bleed. Like when you touch the fabric, the mark doesn't expand. And I really like that. So I'm going to cheat and just draw in his pupils. Like that. And there we go. Oh, it, yay, he's so cute. He's so cute. Oh, Betty said it's called a snood. A waddle or a snood. Thank you, Miss Mimsy, for posting the link. Nina, uh, Mimsy posted the link for the pattern. So you can click on that. And uh, also, there is a description box of the video. And oftentimes, I put patterns... Links for patterns, links to other videos, links to Facebook or Etsy, all in the description box. So it depends on which device you're watching from, on how to open up the description box. And I'm just waiting for this to cool down, so we'll talk about it. But if you're watching on a mobile device, look next to the title of the video. There should be a little gray arrow to the right, and if you click on that, it opens up the description box. And if you're watching on a computer, uh, some of the tablets, look underneath of the title of the video and you should see a caption that says, see more. I think that's what it says, see more. And if you click on that, it opens up the description box. All kinds of links and goodies are in the description box. And uh, yes, that's how you find it. 
All right, that's nice and cool, y'all. That's not going anywhere. And we've layered several, let's see, one, two, three layers of fabric, four layers in some places. And I wouldn't say it is super, super soft, but it's still pretty drapeable. And that's one of the reasons why I really like the Heat and Bond Light. So today we're going to be doing some free motion quilting because that's the fastest for me. However, you can stitch down all of your applique with any stitch that you like. I'm just going to try and put that right in the center. I'm going to create the layers for my mug rug. I have the backing and it's about an inch bigger all the way around. I have my batting cut the same size as my mug rug. Y'all, this is uh, an 80-20 batting. I cannot tell you what brand it is because it is leftover scraps from a quilt. Uh, but yeah, and I, to be really honest, which I, I love to be really honest in my videos, I don't have a preferred batting brand. I generally like most of the 80-20 battings that I have used. I just got a great big roll. This one is all cotton, Toasty brand. I think it's called Toasty from Joann's. It's like normally 200 and some dollars. It's on sale right now for $79. Huge, great big roll. So I bought that. I've never used that, so I'm kind of excited to see how that does. But y'all, I'm really not partial to any brand. Uh, I would love to use a wool batting. However, I know several people who are allergic to wool. So I stay away from the wool. But uh, I do love the feeling of wool batting in a quilt. But 80-20 batting, that's what this is. And I'm just going to glue baste my three layers together. You could use pins if you want to. Ooh, I thought I just broke my glue bottle. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to add some little dots of glue. Little dots, little dots. Not a lot, just like little dots here and there, just to keep the three layers from moving and shifting as we quilt this little mug rug. We're gonna flip that over and try to get it nice and straight like that. Now, there's so many different options when y'all are doing these projects. You could take this just by itself over to the sewing machine and stitch down all your applique right now if you wanted to. You could do that. Or you can go ahead and create your layers and stitch down your applique at the same time you would be quilting your mug rug, right? So there's really no right way or no wrong way. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and create the layers for my mug rug and stitch down my pieces as we quilt our mug rug. No right way. No wrong way. Whichever way you like to do it, that's the right way. <laughs> right? Now I'm just going to flip this over, put it down on our batting, line up those raw edges, smooth it out, and now I'm going to dry this glue with a hot iron. You could lay something over top of this if you're scared of getting glue on your iron. But I was pretty careful with my glue, so I think we're good. Just drying that glue so that we're not bringing any wet glue over to the sewing machine. Beverly said, I'm so hooked on Elmer's glue. Me too. <laughs> 
for me, it was such a game changer. It really just changed and made my life so much easier. I know there's lots of people out there who prefer not to use the glue, and that's perfectly fine. We're all different, but for me, the glue just simplified all parts of the process. <laughs> I'm going to flip this over and dry the glue from the back side as well. Just drying that glue from the back. Y'all, uh, I thought it would be fun today. Remember when we did the live every single day with the traditional quilt blocks? That was so much fun. That was a lot of work, but oh my goodness, that was so much fun. You know how we did the uh, would you rather questions and what's your favorite questions? I don't know that I asked this question, so it's kind of fitting for today's video. But I thought it would be fun while I'm stitching everything down. Y'all could play along if you want to. You don't have to. But what is your ideal favorite Thanksgiving meal? Like what is... What's on your table at Thanksgiving? I'll tell you a must have for me is green bean casserole. <laughs> if I don't make green bean casserole, my kids are so upset. <laughs> They're so really mad. Valera, thank you so much. Thank you. Green bean casserole, cheesy potatoes or mashed potatoes. I love a cranberry relish with the turkey and the mashed potatoes. Yes. Thank you so much, Valera. Someone contacted me on Facebook the other day with the same name as yours. Same first name. I was like, Valera sent me a message on Facebook. But it wasn't you. <laughs> it was another, it was a different Valera. She probably thought I was crazy because I was so excited. And she's like, I'm not Valera from, face from YouTube. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm so sorry. Oh, I love my carbs. Yes. Stuffing, homemade stuffing. Yes. Ham and cranberry. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to wait for this to cool off just a second. So what I've already done at the sewing machine, because I knew I was going to do a free motion stitch with my applique, is I've already put the free motion foot on my machine. And I have the same color thread in the top and the bottom. For me, that's the easiest because you never know. You might, tension might be off. You might see the top thread on the bottom, the bottom thread on the top. I have the same thread, top and bottom. Uh, today I'm using a light brown thread from YLI. And uh, it's one of my go-to fabrics for piecing and quilting and for stitching applique. And that's what I'm using today. When we're done with the quilting, I will switch my foot over and we're going to hopefully quickly do the little binding on this mug rug just like that. Won't that be cute? Should be nice and cooled off. Ooh, turkey and barley soup. That's such a great idea. Macaroni and cheese. Sweet potatoes, pecan pie. My son makes an amazing pecan pie. That's like his specialty. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over to my sewing machine. There we go. And uh, I'm going to bring all the layers of this project right over. And hopefully I'll go through this part pretty quickly. But we're just going to do a straight stitch all the way around all the raw edges of my turkey 
And then uh, we might do some just loop-de-loop -loop quilting in the background, something like that, depending on how long all of this takes. <laughs> we shall see. So I'm going to just start right here in the center with his eyes. I'm going to bring up that bobbin thread. Just like that. But y'all, you can use, uh, on my other one, the example one I showed, I used a satin stitch. And that was so cute. You could use a zigzag stitch. Oh, no. I have the dropsies today. You could use a zigzag stitch. A blanket stitch would be super adorable. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go around each one of these applique pieces. So y'all feel free to chat amongst each other. That's one of the reasons why we're here, right? And just know that I cannot see your comments while I'm over here at the sewing machine. So if you have questions, hold on to them for just a little bit. I have my stitch set to zero and yeah, we're ready to go. Just gonna lock those stitches in and now we can start. I'm gonna cut off these little threads where we started. And now I'll just be jumping from piece to piece, moving around and we'll cut those jump stitches when we're all done. Now the eyes, we're actually sewing through four layers of fabric and heat and bond, right? So that's probably the thickest part are his eyes, his beak, and his little waddle, his waddle. Gonna do a little running stitch and stitch this down while we're right here like that. There we go. Now I'll jump to his face. Circles, I have the hardest time doing circles, free motion, but if it's a little wonky, that's okay. jump over to his body and we'll start right there. Thanksgiving food is my all-time favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite holiday. For me it's just probably the most relaxing holiday and the food is my favorite. going to move right up and stitch this yellow part of his feathers. I try to break thread as few times as I possibly can. Only because I'm really lazy and I cutting the jump stitches <laughs> is, you know, that's probably my least favorite part. Cutting jump stitches. So I just try to run the stitch as long as I can 
without breaking that thread. That might mean that I stitch part of the leaf and then go back up that same stitching line to continue on and that's fine. Just like that. Let's see if I continue this way, let's go this way. Skip right over that one and let's go this way. Like that. Now I'm just going to travel right next to his body and go up to the yellow feather and then quilt my way right back. There we go. All of our pieces are stitched down just like that. Now I am gonna go ahead and break the thread there and I'm gonna change the color of my top thread to one that kind of blends in with the background a little bit better. I'm gonna keep the same brown thread in the bobbin and hopefully we don't have any tension issues, but we'll see. Give me just a second. I'm gonna re-thread this machine. That reminds me it's a good time to clean my sewing machine <laughs> I just got done piecing together two t-shirt quilt tops so it's time for a good cleaning in the bobbin area <laughs> we're gonna bring up that bobbin thread again so now my top thread's gonna blend in pretty well with the background of my mug rug and I'm just gonna go through and do some kind of free motion design. Let's see what we can do. Something that's pretty quick. Let's see, let me cut this a little bit shorter. There, we'll do some little loop-de-loops. That goes by pretty fast. Yeah, that'll look cute. And you'll notice my little loop-de-loops. Some are bigger than others. I think that's just part of the quirky nature of this mug rug, <laughs> right? Go up here and get that corner. trying to do it so my hands aren't in your way. <laughs> like 
go there we go now I'm going to switch to Kim Rover so you can see this really well holy moly holy moly cutting that there we go holy moly can you have a free motion class that would be awesome Valera oh my goodness <laughs> oh thank you I think a free motion class would be really fun and I think it would be helpful, right, to a lot of people. Y'all, look, my free motion on my sit-down sewing machine, because I don't do it that much, is a little wonky sometimes. And I'm okay with that. But I do think a class would be really helpful, right? Oh, Valera, you're so sweet. All right, y'all, I really do think that I need to give this a press before I start doing, <laughs> before I start trying to do the binding on this. And then I was going to cut these little jump stitches. But you see how fast all of that stitched out doing the free motion stitching? If I was doing a satin stitch, I would probably still be on his head. <laughs> right but that's just me I tend to go really slow when I'm doing a satin or a zigzag stitch uh, so it's much slower going for me when doing those stitches I know we have some jump stitches on the back I'm going to go ahead and cut those too but I used a thread that really blends into this fabric on the background right you don't even see that quilting unless you really are looking for it. But you have the quilty texture on the back. All right, let's give this a press, hopefully nice and flat, so we can get this binding done. Now a really quick way to finish this would have been to stitch down all your pieces and even do the quilting if you wanted to with just the top and the batting. And then bring in your backing and sew all the way around and flip it right side out. That would be super cute too. Tamara, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that I forgot to upload this to the Creative Crew group, but when we're done with the live, I'm going to go over there and put this pattern in the file section. Well, and I can tell you what, <laughs> you want to know one of the reasons why it went by so fast? These feathers aren't stitched, this one and this one. So I have to change back thread later on and stitch these pieces down. <laughs> I thought it went by really fast. Yeah, I'll load the PDF up in the Creative Crew in the file section as soon as we're done. Deb asked, uh, is there a right side of the batting to be next to the quilt top? Deb, in a lot of battings, yes, there is. Most bat, well, I don't want to say most. A lot of battings have a scrim. They have a right side and a wrong side. Now you asked me that question and it's totally left my mind. But, uh, well, I can't show you with this one because I've just covered up the batting. But uh, like in warm and natural batting, <clears throat> it has like a dirty side, the little brown little speckles all in it. And the other side 
looks fairly clean and there's no speckles. That'll show you the right side and the wrong side. And some of them are needle punched. So there's little dimples on one side and what they call pimples on the other. It looks like maybe a sweatshirt that's been washed a lot and it gets the little tiny little fuzzy bits. A lot of battings have dimples and pimples. And I'm forgetting now that I'm live, which way it goes up and which way it goes down. But yes, it does make a difference. I'll have to look that up and then when we're done, I'll put it in the comment section because I don't want to tell you which way is right and wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't want to give you bad information, but there is in a lot of battings a right side and a wrong side. Valeria, I did do a video as part of a t-shirt quilt series uh, and I showed a lot of different battings and showed that depending on the type of batting is going to require more or less quilting too, right? Oh, Delane, thank you. Pimp the dimples go up and the pimples go down, if that makes sense. Pull out a piece of batting and really take a good close look at it close up. A lot of battings have the little balls, the little limp balls that looks like. And the other side, if you look really carefully, you see the little dimples. The dimples go up. Pat wants to know, how do you refresh on an iPad? I wish I could help you, Miss Pat. I don't have an iPad, so I'm not sure. I know lots of people here have iPads, though. All right, while we're chatting, I'm going to go ahead and do the little binding on this mug rug. Isn't it funny how you might know something, like someone's name something like that until you're standing right in front of them and then all of a sudden <laughs> I can't remember seeing as I have two quilts to quilt this afternoon that'll be a good refresher which side of the batting goes up and which side goes down I'm using a new batting that I haven't used before I think it's called Toasty. The roll is right behind me back there. That is 100% cotton. I'm kind of excited to try it. I hope I like it. If I do, I'm going to go back and get some more because it's on sale at Joann's. It's like 90 inches wide and you get 20 yards for 79 bucks. I hope I love it. If I do, I'm going to go get some more while it's still on sale. <laughs> we'll see. Read your message about your name. I will in just a second because I know I'm probably saying it incorrectly, right? Going up. Did you send me a message here? Did you post it here in the comment section? I do think this mug rug would look super cute without a binding, just featuring the top, right? I think that would be really cute. It's in the chat. Okay, I'll have to scroll back up through because I just did a quick scroll and I didn't see it. So when we're done, I'll scroll all the way up until I find it. I promise.
Yeah, I thought that was a good price for 90-inch batting, too, Miss Jeannie. I did. I thought that was a pretty good price. So it ends up the next two quilts I'm doing, the cost per quilt for batting is $8. I don't know how you could beat that. For an all cotton batting, eight bucks. I did the math while I was there because like, do I really want to, to buy this great big roll or not? So while I was waiting for fabric to get cut, I was doing the math on my calculator. <laughs> yeah, and it turns out the batting for my, these two quilts, $8 a piece. That's really good. So I got it. <laughs> And then when I got home, I showed it to Harlan, and I told on the price. He's like, you should have got three or four of them. So I might go back. I might go back. Little dots of glue. Of course, I'm gonna get glue all over my fingers. That's okay. Yeah, I thought, you know, I would quilt these two quilts and see how I like it. And if it goes really well, I will probably go back and get more. Glue, 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 glue. I'm gonna hold that down and draw that glue like that. Try to get a nice pretty little corner to my binding. Y'all, this mug rug series has been so much fun. Just letting you know, we're gonna be transitioning into Christmas ornaments next week. I have a few ideas. I'm not sure which one we're gonna do first, so I didn't post any links or any patterns for next week yet but as soon as I figure out which one we're doing I will let you know but yep we're gonna be doing some Christmas ornaments for a couple of weeks anyway Carrie said if she bought the rat <laughs> if she bought the batting and the roll, she'd have to store them in her trailer. We did a zoom one day and she showed me where she's keeping all of her uh, sewing supplies. Actually, it's a nice setup, Miss Sherry. <laughs> You're very fortunate to have the extra space. We're almost done, y'all. We're almost done. Do you have a Christmas ornament with, do you have a mug rug with a round Christmas ornament on it? Stargazer. Uh, you know what, as soon as I get this side done, Let's go see, because I cannot remember, <laughs> to be really honest with you. There's, there's a few mug rug, Christmas mug rugs in my Etsy shop, and I don't know if we've done a round one. 
I think we did one that's not round. It's kind of like, like an old timey Victorian shaped Christmas ornament. I will have to look. Actually, I might have a stocking with a round Christmas ornament on it. The applique would be the same. You would just not make a stocking and make a mug rug instead. But let's get this nice and dry. And while it's cooling, let's go take a look in the Etsy. Tammy says, I still cannot print out the home is where you nest pattern. Hmm. Tammy, can you send me an email at lisacapenquilts at gmail.com and I'll send it to you in an email. How about that? Let's go check out the Etsy shop and see if we have any round Christmas ornaments while uh, the mug rug is cooling off. Go over to Etsy. Let's go to the shop manager. And let's go to my Etsy shop. All right, let's go to mug rug patterns. There's 32 of them. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. All right, I don't see them there. Let's go to Christmas projects. All right, here we go. We have Jingle Bells. We have the snowman. There's a Christmas tree and a snowflakes, but those are Christmas stockings. You could use the applique that way though. Let's see. We have the little penguin, a gingerbread man. Okay. I knew there was a round Christmas ornament it is on a stocking. Let me pull this up so you could see it. There's the stocking. You could use the applique and make mug rugs instead, right? But uh, there's the round Christmas ornament applique. This comes with SVGs, so if you have a cutting machine, you could cut them out with your cutting machine. But it's a stocking, not a mug rug. Maybe I should make a mug rug. <laughs> it would be the same applique though, really. All right. There we go. I think that's nice and cool. Ta -da, ta -da. Let me see if I've missed anything. Lyric wants to know, what is a mug rug? Mug rugs are really awesome. So I use them for all kinds of stuff. So it's a little tiny baby quilt, right? You could use it as an art quilt and hang this up on the wall or prop it up on a countertop, something like that. Uh, I use mine as mouse pads. When my kids were little, I used to use these for their snacks and their lunches because you can wash them, right? And so they can have their snack at a nice little clean setting at their desk, at school, at lunch, on the go, and then wash it. So mug rugs are typically bigger than a coaster and smaller than a placemat. So this one is eight and a half by 11. It's the same size as a sheet of paper. I tend to like my mug rugs a little bit bigger this one's a smaller one. This is a video on our channel, on my channel. So this one is a little bit smaller, you can see, just like that. And this is the one I use as my new mouse pad next to my computer. <laughs> Miss Pat, you asked, is the binding wider than one inch before turning? Were you talking about the binding on this mug rug? I believe it is one inch all the way around before turning. All right, so let me change the foot on my machine. I'll, I'll come back. 
<laughs> I have all this stuff to do. I better make a list. I'm going to be loading this pattern up to the creative crew so those of you who are there can get this pattern really quickly. And then, uh, Valera, I'm going to look up your message that I've missed about your name. I hope it's telling me how to say your name correctly. And then I'm going to come back and stitch down these three pieces, which I totally missed. I totally missed those pieces, but that's okay. I'll come back later this afternoon and do that. Let's switch over this foot. I'm glad y'all don't mind when I make mistakes in my videos. <laughs> Because the pressure would just be too much. It would be so much pressure to be perfect all the time. Nobody needs that kind of pressure in their life, right? All right, so I have that foot on. And I'm going to bump up the stitch length. I like to do the stitches on my binding mug rugs a little bit larger. So I'm going to do it at a 2.6 for the stitch length and I'm just going to stitch down this binding all the way around. One side. side and this is the last side. And I just like to overlap where I started instead of doing a bunch of back stitches there. I'm just overlapping right where I started. And that kind of keeps those stitches still really thin. I'm kind of messy when I do my back stitches. And so this locks everything in, but keeps that stitch kind of still really nice and clean for me. So there we are, y'all. Let me bring in this first one. And you can see the two differences between the two. I'll move this out of the way. We can move you back. There you go. So this one, I said he kind of looks like he has a crown. <laughs> and this one, it looks totally different. Same pieces, just arranged differently. I still think he's really cute. But this probably looks more proportionate, right? <laughs> Tessa. I see you said, uh, I think I registered for the swap, but I didn't receive an email. Uh, that means you're on Facebook and you're in the creative crew. Can you send me a private message later on when we're done with the live? And I'll go over to Elfster and take a look to see if you're in there. The cutoff date was Saturday night. Uh, so if you registered before Saturday night, then you should be in there and we'll take a look. So send me a private message on Facebook. Stargazer said, I don't trust perfect people. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody's perfect, right? But sometimes our pressure to do everything so right is just, oh, I'm so glad I don't have that here on my channel. Y'all know I mess up my words. I mess up what I'm saying. I mess up my pieces sometimes, and it's okay. Let's see. Just want to make sure. Does anybody have any questions about the mug rug or anything else that I can help with while we're alive? 
Amelia said, I don't know you, but you look like a cool person. Thank you. Thank you. You just made my day. You just made my day. I'm actually not really that cool. I'm kind of a dorky person, but <laughs> if you, that's just who I am. So it's been really fun. I feel like this has gone by really fast. It goes by fast too, y'all, because I pre-cut all of the pieces. Diva says she is not dorky. I am kind of dorky. You should see me in like not during a live. Pretty dorky and quirky. But I think quirky is cute, right? That's just me. Thank you, Miss Jeannie. Thank you. It was so good. Uh, we Zoomed. I Zoomed. Let's see. Alexis was hosting a Zoom. I was able to come on that night. And then you did a Zoom the next night, and I was sick. So I missed hanging out with y'all. I hope y'all had fun. Diva is Miss Maureen. Maureen is working on, I video chatted with her last night. She is working on converting the turkey pieces into an SVG. And when she does that, she's going to post it in the creative crew. Because when I made this pattern, I only created the tracing templates. I did not make an SVG for this file. And most of the time, my free patterns... Uh, are just the tracing templates, right? Um, I like to include a little something extra for the, for the patterns that you pay for, right? I want to give more bang for the buck anyway, but at the time I was not including SVGs when I did this. So Maureen is working on making those into an SVG if you're in the creative crew. If you're not, there's a link down in the description box if you're on Facebook and want to join in. Isn't he so cute? So now I have two of these. We can hang one up downstairs in the kitchen maybe for November. Sherry said the embroidery file would be really amazing. <laughs> Girl, you are a vectorizing master. You could whip out the embroidery file on these pieces so fast. I am feeling better, Jeannie. I am. I think it was a bug. Thankfully, though, it was only it was only like half of a day. So I feel a lot better. Sherry, you haven't gotten in brilliance yet. Uh, I'm going to be using in Brilliance sometime this week. Today is already Thursday. Oh, my glory. <laughs> I want to uh, digitize a mug rug for my person for the mug rug swap. I was kind of excited to see her name, that I got her name, and so I'm going to do some embroidery on my mug rug. Oh, uh... Miss Maureen, she's known as Diva here, which she is totally a diva in my book. Uh, but on Facebook, she is the moderator for the Creative Crew, and she's posting a reminder that if you want to join Creative Crew, there's two security questions, y'all. There's two security questions. I'm going to change this so that I'm bigger. There we go. Two security questions. They're very easy. But to help reduce a lot of the spam accounts coming into the group and causing havoc and drama, no one needs that, right? There are two security questions, super easy. You got to answer those two questions if you want to join. It just takes a second. They're super duper easy, I promise. It's not like taking a high school exam. <laughs> but answer those two questions and then we can join you in. Y'all, there's over 4,000 members. We do lives. We do, a lot of our members are starting to do tutorials in our group. Some of them are even live. So if you have questions, you can ask them right on our creative crew page. And then we've, this is our second swap. It's the mug rug swap is closed. 
So if you're watching me for the first time and you're like, ooh, I want to join the mug rug swap, the RSVP is closed, but we're going to be doing a Christmas ornament swap next month. But you got to answer the two security questions. And if you invite your friends, reach out and let them know, hey, I invited you, but you got to answer the two little quick questions so you can join in and have fun. Y'all, I call it a, a family. It's a Facebook group, but we're so close and tight knit. It's like a family. And if you have questions, all you got to do is post a picture of what you're doing and you can get some help pretty quickly. Tammy said, the email I did does not work. Lisa Capen Quilts at gmail.com. It was working up until two hours ago, <laughs> unless something happened. But I got an email two hours ago. Do you have to make a mug rug out of felt? Nope. This is all uh, cotton. This backing was muslin. And then all of these pieces are just quilting cotton, but you could make it out of a shirt if you wanted to. You could cut up a pair of blue jeans and make a mug rug out of that if you wanted to. Those are some of my passion things to do. Okay, I'm, I'm, I love making memory quilts and projects out of clothing and mug rugs made out of clothing are fantastic. So nope, it does it not just felt, you could use all kinds of stuff. Judy, you just joined the group. That's awesome. Jackie, I'm so glad. Well, this is gonna be the last mug rug, but y'all, we're gonna start doing some other fun stuff like Christmas ornaments next week. Ruth, you just got done embroidering the design for your swap partner. I really, I've really enjoyed these swaps. They're so much fun. Does the ornament have to be fabric? Sand of the Sun, are you talking about the Christmas ornaments that we're going to be doing in the lives coming up? Some of them are going to be fabric. And possibly some of them are not. I have a bunch of ideas and saved. And I have to go through and figure out which are the easiest ones to make. Especially during a live. <laughs> and uh, so I haven't exactly decided yet. Diana. Oh, you're going to love it. Now the mug rug swap is closed. But in three short weeks, we're opening up the Christmas ornament swap. Hello, Cheryl. Y'all, it's been so much fun to hang out with you today. It really has. Santa the Sun said, yes, I have beautiful shells with glitter that are beautiful. Don't you love glitter? <laughs> I love glitter. Yes. I don't know. Maybe you'll have to send me an email of what your shells look like, what you've done with them. Pat said, are people supposed to notify us when they draw our name? Pet, the names have already been drawn, so everybody's going to log into Elfster, and soon as you do, it's going to tell you the person's name you got. Not everybody reaches out to that person. They might want it to be a surprise until you get their mug rug. So they might not reach out to you at all. They might just make you a special mug rug and send it to you, and it's going to be a surprise until you get it. Now, some people are reaching out and asking questions, and maybe they want a little inspiration. So they might ask you, like, what's your favorite color? Do you like butterflies? Do you like this? Do you like that? But the majority of everyone that I've talked to, 
Well, some of them had already made their mug rugs before we even drew names, right? Because they were so excited about it. But uh, the majority of everyone is, once they got the name, they're making a mug rug, and they haven't reached out. So if you haven't heard from the person who got your name, do not worry. And Sherry makes a good point. Questions can be anonymous. They can be. <laughs> See how the son said, I'm staying with my mom since her surgery, and she got your name for the swap. That's so funny. That's funny. Elfster just mixes y'all up. I don't know how that works. Cheryl, there's a link to the Facebook group. It's called The Creative Crew. There's a link down in the description box. And you can jump over there and join the group. June, you just went over and joined the group. That's awesome. All right, hold on a second, y'all. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Sorry, I had to do something real quick. Y'all, it has been so much fun. I do have some things to go do. I'm going to go back and review some messages. And I'm going to go post this turkey pattern in the creative crew group for everybody. Uh, then I've got two quilts to quilt. And then I need to finish stitching down the three parts that I missed on this one. But I love you so much. I hope the rest of your week and your weekend is fantastic. Uh, I look forward to doing the Christmas ornament. If there is a pattern for what we're doing next week, keep an eye out here on my channel because I will post the link for the live a couple days in advance. And if there's a pattern that you need and you want to make it with me live, it'll be in the description box of that thumbnail. So take a look. Keep an eye out. Judy, uh, as soon as we're done with the live, either myself or Miss Maureen can join you in. We're both here in the live, so there's no one over there on Facebook right now to accept the invitations. And so it's just going to take until we're done with the live. <laughs> All right, everybody. It's been so much fun hanging out with you. I hope to see you next week. Bye, everybody.